Okay, Joey's doing some old school fret work. Uh, Joey used to do this full time like 20 years ago, so it's kind of fun. Like, hey, get out there, knock this thing out like we used to. Uh, but I'm sure he's going to do a nice job. All right, here Joey's taking an initial cut at the nut, and he's using this nice uh, Delta Rockwell sander, a 6 by 48 inch belt, and he's just giving it a nice little initial curve shape to the rectangular bone nut. You know, this starts as just a straight rectangular slab of bone, and we shape it from there. Okay, here's Joey's putting his little crown signature thing on it, and uh, he used to put this on necks back in the late 90s, so sometimes there would be guys on forums and they'd have the neck on and they're wondering what this heck the thing is it looks like a crown well that was joey that used to do that so i thought hey joey put it on this neck too just for kicks memo's taking care of this part what memo's doing is he's just got this thing in a uh vice on a drill press and he's marked it out so he's marking it for the three bolt setup so this is going to have the three neck screws rather than what we would normally use so this part he's just doing it measuring it and doing it by hand and now he's doing a little preliminary drill for the micro tilt discs so these three bolt necks they had a little allen key which you could see but you really couldn't see it had a little allen key hidden beneath the neck plate which you could adjust to pivot the neck in or out and that screw that you turn doesn't press against the neck wood, it presses against a little steel disc that's inserted. Here he was just doing a little Dremel cleanup uh, because the drill bit's not quite perfect for this and the edge of the disc has a little knurling on it for it to bite on it. So Memo's just trying to get that really nice for that disc to bite on when he presses it in. Okay, we're in the polish department. We've already done the fret work. So, uh, especially on this gloss neck, it makes a lot of sense if you're gonna do the bus buff job after you uh, do the fret work, cause you know, you might often get some scruffs on the top of it. So what he's doing now is he is block sanding uh, with very fine sandpaper between the frets because the gloss, you, you gotta take, it ha it's kind of has what they call orange peel. You could, if you ever look at a car and it looks real shiny, but you look up close and it's a little bit wavy, a little ripply. Well, what color sanding really flattens that before we buff it. So what's going on here is we're getting that finish really nice and flat before we buff it. And that's how it's gonna come out looking like still water. Now he's using some Minzerna cutting compound on the buffing wheel. And that's just taking out the kind of fine scratches we put in it by doing the fine sanding. This is really like how you'd see in a fine auto body shop or a high-end uh, car manufacturer. Okay, at this point he's just cleaning out some of the polish because after he buffs that, there's gonna be a lot of polished compound that's stuck in the little nooks uh, by the sides of the fret. So he's just doing a little cleanup afterward. And notice at this point, the nut has just a little bit of a curve that we used, uh, that Joey put on that belt sander, but it's not slotted yet. Okay, we're in the final assembly department and we are putting the keys on. And again, these are the keys that were 1975 uh, sample keys sent, by, sent from Germany by Helmut Schaller to uh, Leo Fender here at CLF Research. Uh, the one thing that we did swap is uh, the posts on them. We swapped them to the, uh, the GNL Ultralight tapered aluminum posts. Uh, these ones being samples, I think it was mostly sample purpose was to see how the logo looked because three of them just had this straight post and one of them had a tapered post. So it's like, okay, let's not use those. We'll use the old rest of the tuners for the cool old historic part, but let's put some better posts on them. Okay, Memory was going to take care of the, uh, the network on this. So I think first thing he's doing, started out doing some measuring and he's gonna mark off where he's gonna put the slots on this. So this is just uh, classic old school nut work. Starts with a rectangular slab of, uh, of bone and it ends up a beautiful nut. Okay, what he's doing here is just like, a, it's a little old school uh, technique. As you can see, he's got a ruler that he's using to mark it off, but he's gonna mark it off on a, on a radius surface. So he's used a rubber band to kind of pull the, uh, the ruler down, give it a little flex to make it easier to focus on marking things off rather than holding the metal ruler 
in place because the, the metal ruler, it wants to spring straight. He's making it kind of stay where he wants so he can get a nice clean measurement. Here he is doing the deed, getting in there with the slots. Measure twice, cut once. Okay, now he's doing some detail work on the top of the, of the, uh, the nut. So I mentioned before, Joey did uh, a, just a quick shaving off the top using that, uh, that beautiful Rockwell Delta 6x48 sander. And uh, now Memo's getting in there with the file to do the detail work. So he's already done the slotting. Now he's going to do the detail work in the shaping of the nut. And now he's done with that, he's going to give that bone nut a nice buff up because uh, the bone, when, it, when you buff it up, it takes this beautiful shine. Hey everybody, my name is Dave McLaren, and thanks for watching CLF Research. Uh, today I'm going to be assembling uh, Project 77 again. If you've been watching us on Instagram or Facebook at CLF Research, you might have seen this, uh, this 1977 uh, prototype body uh, that's had some modifications and we're going to go ahead and build this out into a base and hopefully things are going to go well so we're going to go ahead and get started why did i wait so long and nothing knew me more than this song Guys, sorry about the uh, the GNL crinkle neck plate, but uh, it's all I could find at the time. I know if I dig farther, I could find uh, an old chrome uh, MM plate, but uh, hey, the parts are interchangeable. They were all CLF research parts, so let's just ignore that for now, shall we? Okay. I'm going to have to talk to you guys about this. So this base, okay, you see this is a, a Stingray base, but what's all this extra routing out here for? You can see with these posts, it originally, it was, it was made in the wood shop to use an ordinary Stingray bridge. Not like this crusty one, but a nice new one. But at the time they were developing the Saber base, they taught, hey, Let's modify an existing body in the wood shop just to try it out, just to see what it looks like. So I'm going to use this bridge on this project base. It's not naturally lining up on its own. So I kind of have got to have to help to make sure that it gets centered. I can't just plop it on. We be killing it with the steel. We be bringing the funk in by the kilo. I hope it was fun. Watch me choke the music. Keep it breathing even with hands on my throat. I can't live without it and I can't hardly wait for the opportunity to reach a horizon. I'm Okay, that's pretty solid. All right, it's going well so far. So see we have a, not the bridge you would expect on this. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put the pick guard on, get that lined up, and then we got a pickup here. It's a bit of a mystery pickup that was inside the lab. This was originally on a, uh, one of these little, test boards like this. Which way do I hold this in? Hey, how's that? Does that look right? Can I do this? Oh yeah. Jeez. Okay, so this was originally on one of these little test boards. So the lead was quite short. So what I've done is I've extended the leads so I have enough to work with in here because this pickup originally, all I had to do is get from mounted to the board to a jack. 
The other thing we had is uh, we just had a bad uh, joint on here, so we had one dead coil. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we are going to wax pop this and we're going to change the pickup cover to white because what we're going to do is we're going to go for that contrasting color look. Oh, I need some pick guard screws. Fortunately, Leo has a lot of them here. Who knows how old these are? <laughs> they're, they're already vintage pick guard screws. Why did I wait so long? Good luck to nail me more than this song. And since this body was already was drilled for the pit guard. This is a different pit guard. It could be a few different years. So there's a little bit not quite lining up with the screws, but I got a feeling it's going to be close enough that when we drive them in, everything's going to look cool. But when you have a lot of screws and they're not lining up and you got to massage it, sometimes it's helpful to do this like lug nuts on a car, doing them like in a star pattern. sure I'm fitting around the pickup but I think I can just use this pickup cover make sure my holes are lining up nicely yeah so far so good guys More like a looking more like a base, a strange one, but we're getting there. I have to just fish this out of here. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do. Uh, well, look at all these screws I picked up. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go repot this pickup. That means we're gonna wax pot it. We're gonna dip it in uh, a mixture of paraffin and beeswax. Uh, and that helps to keep the pickup quiet, keeps, my, keeps it from being microphonic. You've heard of being able to uh, get close to the pickup and you can speak into it, sounds like a microphone. Well, that's when the, the winding around the coil, the, the wire itself, it gets loose and it can vibrate itself to create its own sound. So what you want to do is get it nice and uh, packaged in this wax. So we're going to go, since this is, was probably waxed what, 40 something years ago, we're gonna go ahead and re-dip it and then swap it to the white pickup cover. All right, let's, uh, let's go. Okay, I just kicked it on, but we're in good shape now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I've just gotta pop these coils out of the cover. Now sometimes coils like this in, um, in a Music Man or GNL, the, the coils can be really stuck in there because it might have been wax potted with the cover on a second time. So uh, particularly with magnetic field design pickups, you want to be careful uh, pushing the coils out so you don't break one of the, uh, the winds and kill your pickup. So you can see here is the guts of the pickup. 
and you can see some of the wax that was still around there. Now we're going to go ahead and drop these in here. Okay, they're in there. Did you, could you see the bubbles coming up? Now, some of those bubbles could be just from the bottom of this, but when we're wax potting them, you'll see little bubbles that come up. They're the little air pockets between the coils. We want to get all of the air bubbles out. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for a few minutes. See that little hole in the middle? Yep. Okay, so that's the little hole that the bobbin was, that, that went through here, that held the bobbin on as it spun. Now, the bubbles coming out of there, all that empty area around the, the magnets, we're getting all that nice filled up with wax. Oh, look at all that coming out. We had a, Let's see we the had bubble a, burst. Oh, there was a big bubble fest that came out of the top. It was beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and pull these out now. Because it's been about uh, 15, 10 minutes, I think we put in there on this one. No. So it's been in here at about uh, 15 minutes, I believe. And we're gonna bring them out here. Let them cool and gel a little bit. Let that wax gel a little bit. <laughs> White cover. It holds me down more than one can hope to. Can't breathe without the rhythm. You're hot. <laughs> it's just it's blazing hot. That's look at that. That's the wax. See that's coming off. <laughs> Come on, baby. Go out. Whoa. You are hot. <laughs> so hot. You have chef fingers, dude. Dude, I know. Look at that. Those are chef fingers that can handle the, the heat. <sighs> it's popping in, though, right? Yeah. yeah nice. You see, the, this was, the pickups were, the coils were so hot. Now look at the, uh, yeah. the cover is expanding as well because it's getting hot. Now. Get that all in there. Yeah, looking great. Okay, now we're going to go ahead. And we're gonna repot this with the cover on. It holds me down more than one can hope to. So I'm gonna flip it over here and repot it. And then I'm gonna bring it. Yeah, ready for me to bring it? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna let this cool for a few minutes uh, just so the, the wax will gel up. And then we're gonna use uh, a little rag here. And we're just going to wipe the excess wax off. Wax. We're going to use a, a rag here and wipe off the uh, excess dried wax. And then we are done here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the pot. So we got the wax. We're getting rid of the excess wax. Okay, we're all done wax potting. <laughs> Okay, and we're back. Uh, okay, we're back from the pickups and electronics department where we wax potted this uh, uh, the pickup and we swapped it to the white covers you can see. So now we're going to go ahead and load this thing up, saw it up, and see what happens. Okay, I need some stuff to mount this pickup with which I thought I was ready with. Oh, what? I'm gonna 
go ahead and use these suspension springs. These are probably. And these are machine screws that fit into these little threaded brass bushings. And I think these are for pickups. Yes. Okay. All right. First, it's active, so I got to put a lead in here. And go that over side. there. And this is actually harder than soldering for some reason. Okay, now I gotta feed the pickup lead through. Can't breathe without the rhythm is my We be killing the And I lengthen the wires so I have a couple of little fat spot where we uh put some shrink wrapping on so feed those two separately so they don't get stuck. Here you go, my son. There we go. So there's some suspension springs. I think these are a good length for this. I'm going to press this through. You're going to see a bunch of wax coming out. This is the wax from the potting. Okay, pickup's going in well. Still a lot of wax coming out of here. But I don't mind that. Tells me that we get a, did a really good job wax polishing this thing. I guess when I see the wax coming out, it's a little reassuring in some way. Okay, just going to cut some shrink tubing here, if I can get the uh, wires off there. Because I'm going to have this connection that's kind of up in the air. I'm not soldering this to something. I got to join it to this wire here. So after I'm done, I'm going to put a little of this shrink tubing over it, and that'll keep it from grounding out on anything else. And I'm not going to use electrical tape or some other horrible stuff. Come on. Why did I wait so long? Okay, so we're just gonna do like a little bit of smoke there, okay? Okay, looks like our control plate is wired up. Okay, and everybody make room. Now I gotta get some more pick guard screws. Because the control plates are mounted with these little uh, pick guard screws, the same thing that mounts here. So, uh, unfortunately, Leo's got a lot of these handy right here. So, there we go. Now more than one can hope to. Without the rhythm is my own. So this 
plate didn't really want to sit flush. So when you've got to kind of wiggle it in a little bit, uh, it's nice to use the alternating pattern on the, the screws to help to make sure that it's going to be seated as flush as possible. Okay, well, we're pretty well together now. As you can see, I've got my battery terminal coming out of the back. This foam on here is rock hard because it's uh, from 1977. So, I'm going to see if I can leave it in there and work around with some other foam just because, hey, if the foam's still stuck in there, if I can leave it, I will. If I can't, out goes the foam. Okay, we got a fresh 9 volt battery. Okay, no sparks, no fire. That's a good start. Okay. Just gonna just lean you over. Okay, we're gonna see if this thing is passing signal. I have no idea. This pretty up with the extra little mini toggle. It was just in one of the bins that has, you know, it's forty something years old, and maybe it works. We'll soon see. If it doesn't work, we'll fix it. But you know. It would, be, it would be rad if this thing just magically works. I don't have my hopes up, but... Uh, okay, we are on. Putting up. Uh, I'm not sure which way to leave that switch. Okay. Hey! Oh my... Hey! We're alive! Yeah! Okay, volume. This is rad. I can't believe this. Okay, let's see this little cap. Okay. Okay, so the, the cap it just uh, it just knocks him the top end down. So maybe it was to perhaps to try to give it a bit, a bit more of a jazz sound. Uh, but we're gonna get to play with it. This is gonna be cool. All right, so we know we we're passing signal and we our pots are not scratchy. This is amazing. Okay. We still have to finish up with the battery. And uh, then we'll put some strings on and see what you do. So I have pulled out what's left of the 44-year-old foam, which is super hard. Could not salvage that. So now... I have a new piece of foam somewhere around here. Oh. And I'm just going to try to just copy the same thing that was in there. There was just a little, just a little block. And it appears to have been pressing the battery up against, snug against the, uh, the, the battery cover, which I have a brand new one. Maybe there's an old one around, but the new one's the same as the old one, uh, except the, uh, the ones in the 1970s, they didn't say battery on them. Uh, the ones from 1984 uh, did say battery. I kind of like that. I think it looks kind of classy with a little battery on there. Classy. That's not a very classy word. I'm on the walk I hope to. Can't breathe without the rhythm as well. Okay, there we go, we got our battery plate on. 
Sorry about the black uh, crinkle neck plate. I'll see if I can find something else on a foot. Hey, it gets it done, doesn't it? I'm surprised we're going to get to play with this thing. Okay, I think at this point I'm going to take a break and I'm going to hand this over to, uh, to Steve and let him string this thing up. So you want to take it away, Steve? I feel like a superhero because I'm restringing an original music man that was a real Fender creation at CLF Research slash GNL on Leo's desk. Pretty rad. Pretty, pretty rad. So here, and the rad thing is the taper posts. These are badass. So I go like that, and then boop, like that. Go here. Actually, let me come on. Check it. Why did I wait so long? Tell nothing near me more than these songs. Tell them. Down so it's seated. And then. Close. Close. I like harmonics. It's going to be pretty close. Cool. Check pickup height. Uh, it's gonna go up a little bit. Ooh. I actually feel pretty darn cool sitting here restringing this, and this thing has just come to life. And I'm actually restringing it on. This is Leo Fender's desk or workbench or yeah, workbench. It's a. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm kind of I'm kind of tripping out right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is, this is pretty rad. Wow. I didn't know I'd feel like this. <laughs> so obviously we'll work on action. It's gotta be kind of set up a little bit, but um, yeah, I think it's pretty, to, yeah, it needs to come down. So um, for right now, I think it's pretty close. We'll just set up the action a little bit later, but right now that is strung up. Let's do this. Also, have the camera mic because I was just going to restring it and not say anything but I'm kind of excited about putting this all together seriously this is really this is really really cool um yeah wow this is uh this is pretty amazing this is uh wow project 77 this is cool so yeah I'll uh we'll get it a little bit more set up but she is restrung and ready to rock so there we go cool
Okay, here we have the mini toggle switch. This is what makes this, this control assembly kind of a R&D special. Uh, the volume, treble, and bass, uh, are, and the preamp circuit are all the original stuff, but there's one mini toggle added, and uh, that mini toggle, what it's to do is to, to kill some of the top end, to make the bass just generally le less bright, and that's done by using a, a 0.1 microfarad cap. You know, you might often call a 104K cap uh, 0.1 microfarad. So it's just loading and taking out some of the top end. So it's kind of a neat thing with this switch. So you can have it, the cap switched out and you're in standard Stingray land. And you know, you can roll back that treble quite a lot. But if you just wanted to just uh, like a treble attenuator across the board to soften it, this little mini toggle is pretty cool. The other prototype thing about this space, again, I mentioned earlier the bridge. The bridge was developed for the upcoming Saber base model. So this was done in 1977. The Saber base was introduced in 1978. And the Saber base had quite a different type of bridge than the Stingray. And the Saber base bridge, the Saber base bridge is kind of like the immediate predecessor to the GNL Satellock bridge. And so this body they had routed out to allow this Saber brace bridge just to be screwed on. I could tell by the work that they didn't intend for it to really function. So I just kind of cleaned it up and forced it a little bit to make the bridge function on there because I thought, hey, if they went that far, let's see what it's like. Now the Saber base bridge, it does not have the saddle lock bridge feature on the side, you know, the little Allen set screw that lets you press the saddles like on a GNL. Um, but it does have a bit of a technology in it that as the strings uh, are pulled across the saddle, they're pulling all the saddles against one side of the bridge plate to help transfer that string energy. So it's very getting close to what the saddle lock bridge. Uh, but the saber base bridge, you can see the front is quite a bit longer because it had the built-in mutes that were kind of on a spring-loaded piece of metal. We've taken the mutes off at this point because they were 40 something years old and just dried and couldn't make it work. But there we go, we have an original prototype Sabre based bridge on a Stingray body that was routed out to accept this prototype Sabre based bridge. Uh, we've got prototype control plate with uh, a top end kill switch. And of course we had to make the neck and we made it in the sort of the grand tradition of the CLF research, especially the 70s, early 80s, when those necks just felt like a million dollars, just, just so silky. Uh, and this neck has it. So uh, the headstock may look a little different than you expect, but boy, is the feel there. It's like the best of the 70s right there. There we have it, Project 77 again. Uh, it is working, it is fun, it sounds cool. We got the extra little mini toggle in there. Uh, we may play with this more later, but I'd say for now, we're gonna call this one done.
everybody. I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at CLF Research. So that's where we have a lot of individual pictures, stuff going on in the build. So the videos kind of package things up, but there's a lot of other detail and stuff that we do on the, uh, the other social sites, you know, the individual pictures. So hopefully we will see you on those sites as well. And we look forward to seeing you here again soon. Thank you.